Welcome to Table Talk, a place for honest conversations and getting to meet friends. You are getting to meet a very special friend today, Mr. Warren Gafford. Thank you so much for coming and doing this today. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, it is. I will. I will tell y'all. Um, you've been on my list to have since we started. You were one of the very first names just because I see you walking the halls. I know bits and pieces of your story. And I'm like, he's a fun guy to sit down Thank and talk you. with and hear all the things. It's going to be so fun. First, um, how long have you been at Sagemont? Well, I first came, Lily and I first came to uh, Sagemont with our family in 1971. Okay. And uh, we were only here for about uh, a year, a little over a year. And we just uh, were invited and felt the call to go help start up a mission church yes. in uh, spring. And so we drove back and forth across town uh, for 17 months uh, doing that. That's awesome. Always had the intention of coming right directly back to Sagemont. Right. And uh, I think we tried that four different times before we finally made it back. Okay. Uh, it was 18 years later when we finally got back to Sagemont. That's Sage awesome. Mont, uh, 1990. Okay. And so have been there been since there. Been That's here awesome. Since, and we always considered Sagemont to be our home, yeah. home church. Yeah. Did you grow up in the Houston area? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I grew up in uh, New Braunfels, uh, okay. Central Texas, and uh, uh, moved there when my dad was uh, following construction. And okay. so uh, we moved there in, in uh, when I was four years old. Okay. And I spent the rest of my uh, school years and all there before I okay. left uh, for college. Okay. Where'd you Le go to college? Southwest Texas State okay. University, which yes. is now Texas State. Yes. So That's awesome. Yeah. So San went Marcus. there. And then when did you meet Lillian? Well, we met in high school. Okay. She was a sophomore, and I was a junior. Her folks uh, were uh, farmers and ranchers, and they yeah. moved around from ranch to ranch. And uh, But they moved to New Braunfels when she was in the uh, actually in the ninth grade. Okay. And uh, But I met her in the tenth. Okay. And uh, someone set us up on a blind date. No way. And so we dated. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we dated for our last uh, couple of years in high school. Okay. I guess on that very first uh, date, that blind date, I think we both knew that. That's uh, amazing. That uh, we'd spend the rest of our lives together. That's awesome. Yeah. So when did y'all get married? We got married in August the 3rd, 1956. Okay. So were yeah. you... Just gra after we graduated from, from high, high school. school. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Which was not that unusual in No, those days. that was very common. I mean, that's yeah. what most people did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So then you went to college. Yes. And then... Um, what did what was your career after college? Well, I had a great chemistry teacher in high school, and he sort of got me on the path of chemistry. That's awesome. So I majored in chemistry in, in college, and okay. uh, I sort of mixed, mixed emotions. I liked art and, okay. uh, and uh, chemistry, and so uh, when I first started out, I majored in chemistry with a minor in art. I love it. And that just would take me eight years, I think, to ever get out <laughs> with that kind of a curriculum. Yeah. But uh, so I quickly dropped the art, okay. which I also found was not my talent anyway. <laughs> but, uh, it can be a good hobby. Yes. Yeah. But I loved uh, chemistry, and I uh, when I left college, I, I had, had taught some chemistry lab courses in college mm -hmm. for a couple of years, and I loved teaching. So I decided I wanted to be a chemistry teacher, okay. and I did that for five years okay. in high school. Uh, then realized I couldn't afford to yes. continue that and uh, get my kids through college yes. and do those kind of things. Yes. So I switched over to the chemical manufacturing industry, okay. and I spent the rest of my career doing that. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So how, when did y'all end up in Houston? Uh, after I graduated from college, uh, we moved in 1961 we moved to Dickinson. Okay. And that's where I taught chemistry. Oh, okay, okay. And then... Uh, 
in 1971, we uh, we became enamored with this little church up here on the freeway out in the middle of a field back in those days. Yes. Uh, Sagemont. Sagemont. In the Sagemont community, we, yes. we uh, built a house okay. in Sagemont. Okay. And joined, that's when we joined Sagemont okay. Church. Actually, we joined the church before the house was finished. Okay. So we drove back and forth. That's uh, awesome. For, for a while until we got the house done. I love that. So right here on one of the Sage Roads. Yes. Yes. Was Sage it a Perry Plum. home? Yeah, Perry home. Perry homes, yes. Yeah, I think they all That's, were. I know. It's so <laughs> neat to look back at all of that mm -hmm. and how many. It's neat because at the church you can talk to people mm -hmm. and they're like, yes, I built a Perry home on a Sage whatever road, mm -hmm. joined Sagemont Church and yeah. raised my family. and Enjoyed the rice, rice fields behind the house and uh, cattle. It's amazing. Cow, cows got in my backyard one night. That's so fun. So Yeah, right here, right mm -hmm. here by the church. Right. That's awesome. Okay, so then how long were y'all married before you started having kids? Oh, just a year. Okay, we okay. Coming. So you were finishing we school were and everything yes, with babies. Yes, we married okay. young, okay. Had a, started our family young. Okay. And I think that's one of the secrets to the uh, the the good uh, results we had in raising our yeah. kids. That we were all, weren't that much older than they right. were. <laughs> Enjoy the same things they did. That's awesome. Okay, so I know all three of your children. Yeah. And I could tell you what I think their birth order is, but I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. Probably. Pro because I did hear the, the real truth, and mm -hmm. I was like, what? Uh -huh. So is Dwayne the oldest? Dwayne is the oldest. Okay, so your daughter, our daughter. Our, your daughter Dwayne, Dwayne, yes, yes. <laughs> is the oldest. I And I mean, it's just, y'all, listen, I go off of, I go off of age on how tall you are. Mm -hmm. So I did David, Dennis, Dwayne, which is... That is, uh, it, yeah, that's what most people right. think. Yes, and that's just because of how uh, tall they are, which I know mm -hmm. is not realistic, yeah. but so Dwayne yeah. is the oldest. Dwayne is the oldest. Okay. Then David. Then and David. Then Dennis. Then Dennis. And they were, Dwayne and uh, David were 15 months apart, and wow. David and Dennis were 13 months okay. apart. Okay. So, so y'all y'all were almost busy. Almost had triplets. <laughs> yes. I'm sure it felt like that some days. Yes. That's amazing. And I will also tell you that when I first started, when we first started coming to Sagemont 20 years ago, um, and when David and Dennis were on the worship team singing, mm -hmm. I thought they were one person yeah. for like for a ridiculously long period oh, until yeah. they were both on the stage together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, yeah. there's two of them. There's so many people have asked us if they were twins. Yes. But uh, they were close. But yes. Not, not twins. Well, and it's funny because now that I know them, I'm like, they don't. It, look a lot. Right. They don't. Uh, you can definitely tell them apart. Mm -hmm. But so cool. So you had all your kids. Now, um, your boys, and I don't know about Dwayne, very musically inclined. Yes, and Dwayne, Dwayne could sing, but uh, she was a slave to the piano. Okay, yeah. see, okay, <laughs> musical. Uh, so she, she played the piano and organ. That's at, awesome. Uh, uh, Gulf Meadows and Freedom Church for oh, over 25 years. That's amazing. And uh, actually, she uh, still plays, but uh, she had uh, developed seizures when she was 45 years okay. old. And so that really affected her yeah, ability to play now. To be able to but do But she's that. very musically inclined also. Okay. Now, were you, are you and Lillian musically inclined to have such well, a family of... Music. We were self-taught. I, I was a lay music director for about 25 years. Okay, I, I didn't churches. know that. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but I was self-taught. I Yeah. Uh, and Lillian uh, sang in our little choirs back in those days. Yeah. But uh, she didn't consider herself musically inclined. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that. So before we go much further into the conversation, because we're going to be throwing these names around. Yes. Part of your story and your legacy is the amount of people that you are related to at Sagemont Church. Well, <laughs> the family tree goes far mm -hmm. and wide. Um, and so uh, Dwayne is married to Mac, Mac, who mm -hmm. is now our head security guy here at the church, yes. which his office is right around the corner from me. So I get to see mm -hmm. him almost daily, which is super fun. So he's here doing that for us. They've been well, here a long time. Mm -hmm. Dwayne used to be on staff when I first yes. started mm -hmm. working here. Her office was next to mine. Um, and then uh, David is married to Pat Gafford right. and parent to Natalie. Atwood. Right. Uh, and then what's their son's name? 
uh, uh, Patton Thomas. Da- Thomas, and mm-hmm. he played in the NFL, played for Kansas City, right? Was a long right. snapper. Mm-hmm. These are the things that you hear from parents that they're mm-hmm. like, yes. And he has twins, right? Right? Okay, so all the, and Natalie has two girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're here, super involved. Pat and Natalie do tons of stuff with women's ministry, just mm-hmm. adore them both a ton. And then Dennis. Right. Um, is now married to Mitchie. Right. Um, his first wife passed away. Right. Um, and then he is parent to Misty Niemeyer, who you all get to see on Sunday mornings. She yes. leads worship for us yes. so wonderfully. So that's your grand, Misty's your granddaughter. Right. And she's precious. We love Misty. Um, and then they also have a son, Marcus. Marcus. Okay. Look at me, y'all. Be impressed that I'm remembering all these names. Okay. I, when you start throwing names out at me, I may forget some I know. Of them. I'm like, there's, listen, we're just getting started. Yeah. So then, Marcus. And so those are your three kids and their children. They're, and yes. grand, they have grandchildren and all of that. Yeah. And they're, they're here and they're active. And they're so kind and so sweet. And let me tell you, I talked to Natalie last week and Misty this week mm-hmm. and told them I was going to sit oh, down with did. you. Mm-hmm. And they were both like, what? He hasn't told us. No. What's he did? <laughs> <laughs> they were both so excited. Mm-hmm. They're like, you are going to love it. He's wonderful. <clears throat> they love you so much. Yeah, thank you. They love you so yeah, much. It's mutual. I'm sure. I'm sure. And then one of the really cool things about y'all's family tree is Dennis's wife... Yes. Um, that passed away, Misty's mama. Phyllis. Phyllis. Mm-hmm. Uh, twin sister, identical twin sister right. with Paula Barnett. Right. Who also has been at Sagemont for forever. She's yes. just the most adorable thing. Um, Paula's in the choir. She's on the left when you look at the stage. Little, yes. precious little thing. Um, and identical twin sisters. Right. And um, the Barnett family is long and wide and has mm-hmm. deep roots here at Sagemont as well. Um, but when I think about your family, I include them. And, and I, I do also. I know y'all do. Mm-hmm. Was that, I mean, just because of the, Well, how did that happen? It happened uh, because they were twins and they were inseparable. Okay. And uh, uh Paula married Randy Barnett. Mm -hmm. Randy and Dennis became very close friends. They had a double wedding. Phyllis and... No, they did not. Yes, they did. I (laughs) did not know that. Did they really? Yes, they did. (gasps) Dennis and Randy joined the police academy the same day. Wow. uh, Their careers uh, mirrored each other. And, uh, but uh, the, the... when the twins began began having kids, yes, they were not like cousins. They were brother and sister. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, uh, they were all family, and they have remained family mm-hmm. uh, to this day. And so it was just a natural occurrence that uh, they just all were included together in everything that we did. I love that, Lee and. Uh, just uh, adopted them as her grandkids and great grandkids yes. and so on, and uh, and I did also. Uh, so it's just one big happy family. I love it so, so much. And you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is just <coughs> that large family, large group of people mm-hmm. um, are so close, are so purposeful in spending time together. Yes. Um, how did that start? Was that a you and Lillian going, we want to see everybody, so we're going to get together? Uh, was it just there's so many of us, we have to figure out how to stay connected? Actually, it was another one of those things that God had put together. Mm. We're not that organized. Right. <laughs> but uh, back when we lived in Dickinson, after our Sunday evening services that we had back then, yes, uh, Lillian was the most caring person I've ever seen. She Mm -hmm. would always invite uh, one or two couples over to our house after church. And uh, back then we didn't have much money. And so she was always very frugal. Yeah. Uh, We found that uh, you could feed uh, several couples on a can of tuna fish and uh, a couple of cans of tuna fish and a loaf of bread. Yeah. And so we had uh, tuna fish sandwiches 
Uh, and we'd invite folks over. Most of them had kids around the age of ours. Okay. And so we had a bunch of uh, kids running around. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, that's how the... We uh, eventually began to call it tuna. Tuna. Uh, and it is still going strong. And that's been some, you know, 60 years ago. Yes. And, uh, but uh, as we uh, branched out with friends, we had other people come over and all. And then as we moved up to Sagemont, some of the Sagemont friends, we, mm-hmm. but we did that every Sunday night and still do. That's amazing. And uh, not in our house anymore. Right. Uh, we started to uh, move around from house to house mm-hmm. and they, we don't have tuna. Right. Uh, very seldom do we actually okay. have tuna anymore. <laughs> uh, in fact, we, we call it our uh, BYOT. Uh, bring your own tuna. Bring your own. There and you so go. I love it. And so people will bring whatever they want to, yeah. to eat. And But uh, we fellowship together and just uh, have a good time of loving on each other every, every Sunday evening. Y'all, what a huge encouragement. To It doesn't have to be this huge thing with a huge meal and super no, no. fancy and no. all the stuff. You just go, no, yeah. it's about relationship That's right. and people. That it, that's the thing. It's the it's the, the love, the relationships, the people that we just uh, we just love getting together. Yeah. In fact, uh, if we have to miss for some reason, uh, uh, it's uh, pretty common for our younger generations to sort of pitch a fit because I'm they so sure. much miss that uh, yes. opportunity to get to get together with families. So, yeah, it's just so, beautiful. I yeah. think you know in. You and I were talking a little bit earlier this week, and um, you're like, we've been so blessed that our children love the Lord, and they're in the church, and our grandchildren and Mm great-grandchildren. And I would think a huge piece of that is just the purposefulness of being together and knowing each other and being a part of each other's lives. and. Accountability and encouragement yeah. all probably happens at that oh, yes. Sunday evenings. I think there's just so many things that have grown out of that. Uh, one thing I see in our kids, the, uh, their relationships were with uh, family mm-hmm. more so than the influences of other people in society. Mm-hmm. So many times you see kids that are led astray yeah. by uh, those outside yeah, relationships. Absolutely. And that hasn't happened with our, yeah. our group. Yeah. And I think uh, largely because of the cl- close camaraderie that we have mm-hmm. uh, within the family. Yeah. I just adore that. Yeah. It's, so, it's so amazing, y'all. What a good encouragement for all of us. Make time. Mm-hmm. Get together. And I also love, I know, listen, I'm not a part of the Gafford Barnett family, but if I was like, hey, I want to come to Tuna Sunday night, y'all would go, come on. Yes. Come hang You're out. Come hang out. You know, and so I love that there's that part too. Mm-hmm. And the extended family, everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. So if they're like, hey, I know this person's struggling, they're going to come. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring them over. Mm-hmm. And there's just, it's not exclusive. No. And it's not elitist or anything. It's, Hey, this is we're gonna be jumping in the pool and hanging yes. out and doing whatever and come on. Yes. And so welcoming and so kind, not just to y'all, but outwardly mm-hmm. is just really, really sweet. Well, thank you. Y'all do a good job. Thank you. Um I know you have a huge heart and I want us to spend the rest of our time talking about your precious wife Lillian. And she uh I did not get to know her well, but I yes. did get to know her and she yes. was kind and had a huge smile every time Mm -hmm. I got to see her at church. And um, y'all, I want to just, I brought, because I've been, it's cool when you're like, hey, I want to talk to Warren. And he's like, here's this book. And here's this book. So fun. But y'all, he wrote these two precious books. Um, The first one, Lillian's Story. Yes. You wrote this one um, about her cancer journey. Yes. And it was uh, actually premature. Uh, at the time, uh, I, uh, we could see God intervening in her life so much, so clearly. And uh, I kept notes of every doctor's visit, mm. every, uh, every, everything that she did. And uh, at the time that uh, I wrote that book, she had basically beaten her cancer. Yes. God be- Yes. I love that when you go through here, you'll see like miracle number one, miracle number two. I mean, mean, it's just so encouraging and exciting. I call them miracles. I believe they were. Absolutely. Uh, 
Some people may say, well, that's God's intervention, but uh, hesitate to call them miracles, but uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, I think they are. I love it. But uh, anyway, I, I wrote that one not knowing that she had dementia. Mm-hmm. At the, uh, we had always been led to believe that uh, she had, uh, from her first chemo on, she had memory issues mm-hmm. that uh, the doctors called uh, chemo brain. That they uh, thought that uh, this would uh, eventually clear up, uh, at least for the most part. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't really until after... Uh, I wrote that book that we realized that she actually uh, had dementia. Right. And so, uh, as I say, that book was very premature, and I felt obligated to write the second one. Which is wonderful. The The rest of the story is a beautiful book, too. And in, in looking at these, this was a l- long journey for yes, y'all. Was. From diagnosis of cancer mm-hmm. was it when? In uh, the fall of 2009. Okay, that's what I thought. I, and yeah. I remember when I looked at that, I was like, I did not realize it had been yes. that long of a journey. Yeah. And her cancer journey was from 09 to what, 16, 17? Uh, actually, uh, the end of 2017, early 2018. Okay. And I say that, but she was in remission for a good part of that okay. last several years. Okay. That, yeah. But before she was basically uh, declared cancer free. Yeah. So. Which is amazing. Yes. And just really, 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 really great uh, and awesome. And then it was what in 2020 during well, the pandemic during the pandemic that y'all actually got a diagnosis or we took her to got a hospital. The diagnosis in 2019. Okay. And uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, okay. And maybe, yes, it was in 2019. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought it was so interesting that you, I thought you did such a good job of differentiating what type of dementia she had. I was shocked, yeah. and this is just me not knowing, that there are multiple kinds and they oh, can yes. tell different things. And I thought it was so interesting in here when you talk about we just walked in the room yeah. and the doctor could see her gait yes. and things she was doing and said, okay, this is this and not this. Yeah, that's, it was, uh, the whole process was uh, an educational process yes. for me. I knew nothing about dementia, even though after the fact, we think Leon's mother probably had the okay. same disease. Right. But uh, she was first diagnosed with uh, early onset Alzheimer's. Okay. And uh, uh, she was given medication for that uh, after we actually waited far too long had we realized that she uh, didn't have chemo brain. Right. Uh, But uh, after she was uh, first diagnosed uh, with uh, Alzheimer's, her doctor gave her medications, uh, her neurologist, and asked her to come back in six months mm-hmm. and uh, to reevaluate right. the medications. And the medications actually worked fairly well uh, up until right close to the end of that six months. Okay. But when we walked into the, her neuro- neurologist's mm-hmm. office, uh, when she walked through the door, she said, oh, she doesn't have Alzheimer's. That pretty well floored both of us. Yes. I don't know that Leon really realized right. what was happening, but I couldn't even ask a question. I, I just uh, just waited, and she did some in-office tests. Right. And uh, she told us that uh, I really think that she has Lewy body uh, dementia. Okay. And uh, uh, which she confirmed, and one of the things... <laughs> Besides her gait that she noticed when she walked mm-hmm. in, she asked her to write a, a sentence. And Leon wrote a sentence, and it was so small, the handwriting was so small, mm-hmm. you could barely see it. Mm-hmm. And she said, it's classic. Really? Uh, wow. Of, uh, Louis Body. Uh, but 
she was then diagnosed with Lewy body dementia with uh, okay. Parkinson's okay. Uh, characteristics. Okay. And her medications were all wrong, and that's why they began to not work. Not work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and apparently, uh, many of the dementias will morph from one form into another. Okay. And uh, that's apparently what had happened okay. in her case. Uh, I have a friend that had, had a similar diagnosis, and, and uh, he was then uh, re-diagnosed just recently with uh, Parkinson's dementia. Wow. So it's just uh, it's amazing that how little we know about the yes, brain. absolutely. And how much we think that uh, they ought to be able to find a way to unplug <laughs> the brain with yes. all the technology we have. Yes. But, and Man. I think someday they will. Yeah. But hope so. Someday, yes. Yeah. And so then, um, so 2019, 2020, and so then the last two years, because she passed away in 2022, right? 2022. So kind of the last two years of her life. Yeah. Just one, talk about how you got through that. And maybe you didn't. Maybe it was <laughs> well, day to day. I uh, still get emotional. No, I'm, I'm no. Sorry. and I no, did. please, it is totally fine. But uh, it was a learning process. Yeah. And how I got through it was God and family. I love that. Uh, a lot of prayers, mm -hmm. and uh, the kids were just outstanding. Yeah. They never left our sides mm. during, during that mm -hmm. period. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I had to. Uh, Called one of them at two or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Leon would wake up during the night and see a strange man in bed with her. Yeah. And she would panic. And sure. she was absolutely terrified. And that was uh, her demeanor during much of that last couple okay. of years. But I would call one of the kids to come over. Most of the time, she would still recognize mm -hmm. the kids. Uh, I was going to say, tell the story about <laughs> Dennis coming over because you wrote okay. about that and it made me laugh. A uh, very humorous story because uh, Dennis was uh, the closest by, and so most of the time I would call him mm -hmm. because he could get there quickly. Right. And uh, if he was available, I would call him. And at one time, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I called him and asked him to come over to help settle Lillian down because she was just yeah. panicking. She was terrified. She didn't know who I was, and so I told her, well, let me call Dennis and so there was a, a measure of uh, familiarity with the name. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he got there, and I could tell that she didn't really uh, recognize mm -hmm. him either. Right. So uh, Dennis asked her, said, Mom, do you know who I am? And she said, I know for a good minute or two. She studied him, and she looked up, and she said, well... I don't know who you are, but with that beard, you must be trying to be somebody. And uh, I love that we all, so much. We all uh, got into a giggling fit. Yes. Including Lee. And, That's great. And that yeah. moment of levity, well, it just calmed her down. Yeah. And that, uh, so, but there's just so many strange things that uh, happened that even though she still didn't know who either one of us wa was, right. she felt safe and secure. That's good. And yeah. uh, it's just uh, uh, so many times we just didn't know how to how to make that happen. Right. Yeah. And, uh, it was a very difficult time, but family was uh, Huge. the key. Yes. And uh, some powerful prayer warriors. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think it's so amazing to see that. God put even in her heart 60 years ago to start having people over for tuna yes. fish because God knew y'all were going to need yes. these close bonds and these close relationships Absolutely. to walk through this. I have no doubt that was his plan all yeah. along. Our whole move up to Sagemont, yeah. I could put in that plan. Yes. I can see it now. Right. I couldn't see it at the time. Yes. I just think that's absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, I know here at Sagemont, we have a dementia care support group that meets. Yes. And um, if you are someone that's in this, that's looking at this, please look into that. It's a great thing that it we is. are able to offer. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, friends I know who've parents have walked through um, dementia. Uh, I know it is something that it, you can't understand it until you've walked through it. Yes. Um, if you, and I'm sure you do, get opportunity to talk to people who are walking through it. I have a number of people. Yeah. And I'm so 
happy to have the opportunity to be able to share what little I learned. Yes. I read everything I could find on it. Yeah. And uh, but it's a uh, uh, no two cases are exactly alike, mm -hmm. but the impact on the caregiver is pretty much the same for all of them. Yes. And so I um, hope that I can have a little bit of an impact and help them in some way to weather that, yeah. that storm. Absolutely. And yeah. to walk through that. And y'all, I know Warren is, you see him on Sunday mornings, go up and say, hey, I saw you talking on Table Talk. Can we grab coffee? Can we just like I know he would love to get to sit down and share yes. what the Lord's walked you through and given you the ability to walk through um, yes. and be able to use that. It would, it would certainly be a be my honor. Yeah. And um, is there somewhere people can get these books? Yes, uh, it's on Amazon. Okay, y'all. Uh, you can uh, buy them on Amazon. And okay, I, great. I think the last time I looked, uh, they were both up in the eight to 13,000 or, or million rather on the bestseller list. So, <laughs> so right anyway, up there. <laughs> here's a, uh, so they're cheap. <laughs> That's okay. Y'all listen, but, uh, really, truly, if you are someone walking through, um, caring for a parent or a spouse that's walking through any kind of dementia, <clears throat> Alzheimer's, this is such, and y'all, I was telling Warren, I, he gave it to me earlier this week and I, it's a quick read, but it's so insightful and honest and real and, but it, it also makes you giggle yeah. at times. He's great about putting that in there. There's pictures. It's just, it really is a good thing because I was telling you one of the things you wrote in here that I was like, how did you think of this when you were in the house and she wouldn't recognize you yeah. and she would be saying, where's Warren? Where's Warren? <laughs> Y'all, the Lord gave him or somebody told you this was a great idea. Walk out the front door. You'd walk back in the back door and say, honey, I'm home. Yeah. And she would calm it down. Just everything. It just every time I would come in, I would just say in a loud voice, happy voice, which is she needed. Uh, honey, I'm home. And she would come give me a hug. Yeah. And but she would always ask me, where's that other guy? Yeah. And I would just say he's gone yeah. and uh, just have to learn to get into into her world. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how important that is. Uh, to try to find ways, and I'd always told her that I would never lie to her. Mm -hmm. But uh, when she was in another world, you say whatever you need to say to get into her world and help her to feel uh, a little bit of comfort mm -hmm. and relief and safety, yes. security. Yes. Uh, it's just yeah. uh, she hallucinated a lot toward the end, and she, her family would. Uh, always be in her on her, her mind, and mm -hmm. she would. Uh, uh, she enjoyed going out to eat. And that's about the only thing she could still okay. enjoy. And so, if we'd get, leave the house uh, to go to eat, well, she'd say, "Well, isn't Daddy going with us?" Yeah. Uh, and of course, Daddy had been dead for many years. Sure. But uh, I would just tell her, "No, uh, he's uh, he's resting right now," and that would satisfy her. So we'd go on to eat, and mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, Oh, there's so many things like that that uh, you just have to try to find a way to get into her world mm -hmm. and try to let her feel a little bit, yeah. bit of uh, security. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another thing I think you would be willing to chat with people about is after she passed away. Yes. And you had had years of this was you cared for her. Yes. This is what you did. Yes. Um, but one thing that I have seen from a distance watching you, you're back at church. You're back involved. You're you're doing. Yeah. And I think, and I'm sure it was not easy. And I think people say, how do you continue? Yeah. Well, there again, I don't, I really don't think I could have had it not been for family. Uh, yeah. There was such an encouragement. Absolutely. During all that time. But there were, for the last three years, we just couldn't attend church. Sure. We watched online. Of course, she didn't absorb much or any. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we kept abreast of everything that was going on. We have a wonderful Bible study class, uh, Soul Support. Yes. And uh, they were such an encouragement. But uh, for about three years, we didn't go, I can't tell you how much I missed Mm. the fellowship with the people in, in church. So yeah. 
uh, I hate to use the, the word relief, but uh, yeah. at that point, it was really a relief to be able to get back in the mm -hmm. church. Uh, for the first uh, several months, I would always get here. In fact, I still do try to get here at least 30 minutes or even an hour early mm -hmm. uh, before the 930 uh, service and just sort of sit around, walk the halls, yep. meet people. And no, I'm <laughs> telling you, you'll see Warren walking around. Come early. Yeah. He's out there. I see you. But, uh, can't tell you how much I miss that yeah. fellowship with our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's just, it, that made it so easy yeah. seeing those familiar faces again and mm -hmm. being able to to uh, fellowship with the folks. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, when a lot of this was going on during the pandemic, so right. we, did, we didn't, couldn't come. <laughs> Everybody, to was Everybody was on. Everybody was in that same boat. And I know they all felt the same kind of relief yeah. when they were able to get back, back into their mm -hmm. house of worship. Yes, absolutely. So. I think, you know, sitting and listening to you, one of the things I'm taking away from this is don't wait until you're in the hard thing no. to try to build the relationships and build the Absolutely. community and do all that. It's like God says, this mm -hmm. is so important. Do this mm -hmm. thing because you are going to go through the hard. Yeah. And then you have that support system. Mm -hmm. That foundation is already Absolutely. there. Family comes in a lot of forms. Yeah. Uh, and your church family is just as important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so make a lot of friends and yeah. And lean on them when you need That's to. Right. Yeah. So all of you that are listening or watching and are like, but Sage wants a really big place or I just got here and it's hard to meet people and I'm uncomfortable or I'm nervous or mm -hmm. all those things. Y'all do the hard thing. Take yeah. the next steps. Get connected. It's yes. so important. Oh, that. Get into an I Connect group because that's where you find a small yes. church within the large. Amen. And that's where your where your relationships right. begin in, mm -hmm. in that uh, small yes. group setting. Yeah. Uh, worship is wonderful. We've got to have that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you also have to have those uh, personal relationships right. with them. You other, need to be connected to people. Family. Yes, I love that. And I want to show you all just a couple other things because I just think they're super fun. One, <laughs> okay, some of you will be like, I remember that. Some of you might still have it somewhere in your house. But Sagemont used, we did a magazine for years called Sagemont Life. And it was so fun. It would come in the mail or you could pick it up here. And uh, back, ooh, I'd have to see, I didn't even look, 2011. 2011. There's a whole article about all the Gafford Barnett crew and it was so fun going back and reading this because i was like misty doesn't have kids you yeah, know in this yeah. i was like all the little people laney mm -hmm. laney little laney thompson's just a tiny little thing in here all the little people and um but just so cool that the legacy of your family here at sagemont mm -hmm. has made a huge impact at our church well, thank you and i just think it's amazing that you you've been you and Lillian both were so purposeful yeah. and followed the Lord and were quick to say yes to the things that he called you to. Mostly Lillian. I just... I love that. She uh, was the most wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was always behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, but she had that infectious smile and compassionate heart. She did. That just uh, touched everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. she really, really did. And I love seeing that in her children and in her grandchildren. I'm sure yes. you see that yes. in the legacy that she yes. has left, which yes. is just beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. One thing that uh, Dennis did with Warren, and I have been wanting to do it with my parents, and I think, and I just want to, listen, we aren't sponsored by anybody, but this is just really cool. Some of you might have done this, but it's called StoryWorth. And what it is, is they set it up, and once a week you would get a question. Yes. And it, you would write a story about that question. Yes. For 52 weeks, and then you can get it as like a hard-bound book, and it's the story of, you know, Warren's life. And this is so... I just think this is so beautiful mm -hmm. because your great great grandchildren will get to read this. Yes. You know, the legacies that aren't even mm -hmm. here yet will get to know you yes. in a way that if you hadn't taken the time to do it, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. would be stories, but not written. And pic- you can upload pictures, oh, and wow. it's just the neatest thing. And I love that uh, Dennis got you this. I love that you took the time to do it. Thank you. I just think that's such a neat blessing yeah. for your family. That was, uh, in fact, all three of those books uh, were really intended to have something that my great-grandchildren and the generations to come could look back and know a little bit Mm -hmm. about who we were. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things, and it's amazing to me in going back and searching back through my memory that uh, some things came out that uh, uh, even our kids had no right. Clue hadn't heard the story. About, yes, uh, about what, what we'd gone through, and particularly about what our, what my parents had gone through. Yeah, and uh, great, my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Uh, so cool. Uh, so I mean, in writing books, people always say, "Oh, I should write a book," <laughs> but it's a whole deal. Yeah, it is. And was that just something that? Even how you were saying you took notes and you read up and yeah. you wanted to be on, is that just, was that a, your whole life you've always been like that? Was that because of walking through all of this with Lillian, no. it became out of well, you? I've always had the opportunity and obligation to write uh, stories uh, uh, at the, the plant that I worked in. Oh, okay. I was in a position where uh, every month I had to write some kind of a story for uh, some of the employees there. Okay. And so I did a lot of that. Uh, I've always had an interest in in the, the literary and the, uh, in writing. I uh, probably can't tell it from my style. No, it's very but, good. <laughs> but uh, I've always had an interest in writing. Yeah. And uh, I have declared I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not writing anything else. Okay, you're good. uh, Well, you have left an amazing legacy of what you have written. Thank you. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, I so appreciate your willingness to talk about hard things. Thank you. Because we know so many people are walking through really hard things. And a lot of times they feel like nobody else Mm -hmm. understands or they can't be sad. They can't hurt They have Mm -hmm. to have this front of always being together. And I so appreciate your willingness to say, no, this was hard and this hurts and it still hurts and it's a process. But I also love that you say all of that and then you go, but God is good. Yes. And just adore that. Yeah. It's amazing. We learned to lean on a number of scriptures, but uh, James 1, 2, and 3, uh, we're all going to have trials. And... uh, God put them there so that we could learn and yeah. establish patience in our life. And uh, God's good. I love that. Thank you for coming and hanging out today. Well, thank you. I hope you had fun. I, I, did, I did, loved so. it. I love getting to hear stories. And you With have. Fear and trembling. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. Yay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And y'all, really, truly, when you see Warren, Go up, introduce yourself, tell him thank you. I know he will love to sit and chat with you. So like we said, he's here Sunday mornings. Come to the lobby, look for Warren. You will find him. So thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for sharing Lillian with all of us. We appreciate that. Y'all have a great rest of your day, evening, whatever time you're listening to this. And we will see you next time on Table Talk. Table Talk.